<laughs> Hi guys, guess what? It's like one o'clock in the morning, and what I'm doing is actually, I wouldn't believe it myself, it's recording myself at home. Uh, but uh, well, these are the times. Uh, we need to do something about our classes, and therefore I decided to record some of the lectures to you. I already believe I hate it very much. Uh, I miss the feedback from you and I'm gonna miss this feedback here because talking to the camera is something different from talking to you. But nevertheless, let's try. Okay, let's, let's try it as you can see desperate times calling for desperate measures. Here we are trying to cope, right? Uh, today, or I should say rather tonight, we are going to deal with unemployment. And that was supposed to be our lecture number five, but actually um, I'm gonna cut it into pieces. Uh, I believe it's gonna be very difficult for you to focus on the topic and for me sitting still, as you know, I like walking. I like a lot of gestures, so I suffer quite a lot being so passive during our recorded lectures. So we'll cut this lecture into parts. Uh, so this is part one. I call it lecture 5.8 on unemployment. So we are going to have a look at what unemployment is, right? And we are going to, to look through some uh, statistical data first before we try uh, to think like economists and analyze what is the economic meaning of this, of this concept. Uh, so what is unemployment about? Uh, in the slides that you have, I uh, refer to the definition that you can find in Penguin's Dictionary of, of Economics. So the unemployment is the fact that there is a certain section of labor force that is able and that is willing to work, but is unable to find what they call gainful employment, right? Uh, so we've got a new term here, labor force. We may feel in kind of intuitive way what labor force is, but we will define it. But before we define it, we will first have a look at the concept of productive age, right? So what is productive age? So as you can imagine, productive age is a certain age you are not too young to work, you are not too old to work. In Poland, this age is from 18, when you officially are declared to be an adult. So you can drink alcohol, you can smoke cigarettes, and you can also work. And that's to 59 for women and to 64 for men. Mostly because of the fact that if you are a woman and you turn 60 or you're a man and you turn 65, then you become a pensioner, right? This is obviously not true in some special cases like soldiers, police officers. They are entitled, or they can be entitled to an earlier retirement, but that's a different story, so to say. So, Having uh, defined the productive age, that is Poland and other countries as well, you may find definition what is productive age in your country if you're Polish, if you're foreign. And then we move to the labor force. And labor force are all that are in productive age, are able and willing to work. So that's labor force, okay? And out of this labor force, some people are employed, so we call them employed. Some people don't have a job, we call them unemployed, right? Obviously, there could be some people that are unable to work or they don't want to work or they are unwilling to work. So even if they are in the 
productive age, they would not belong to labor force. That's it, basically. So if you look at the division of the society, uh, we've got population here, right? What my uh, what my cursor here, right? The arrow. So we've got population, which we can split, this general population, all the people living in your country, we can split it into two categories, people that are not in productive age, meaning they are too young, like uh, my children, for instance, or they are too old, like, for instance, your grandparents. Then we've got people in productive age, which could be me, for instance, I'm in productive age, and we split them into people in labor force, that's me again, and people who are not in labor force because they are unwilling to work or they are unable to work, right? People in labor force, me again, as you remember, we can split them again into employed people, me again, and unemployed people, and those unemployed people are of major interest to us. So as you can see, there is a great difference between population, which is the most general term, people in labor force, uh, which is the number that will be kind of important uh, to us from the point of view of uh, labor market operations, and unemployed people, a certain fraction of, of labor force, uh, which is the subject topic of our of our lecture. How do we measure unemployment? Well, this is uh, mostly a statistical term, but not only. It is also an economic term, obviously. So the first thing is, can we measure inability to work? What does it mean someone is unable to work, right? So if you are a single-handed person, that you cannot pl play a piano, right? You can play the piano and that's kind of obvious, but you can be a single-handed person and be economic teacher. That's not a problem actually, right? Uh, there are people who don't want to work, right? Like those unable to work, those who don't want to work would also be excluded from labor force. So if you are unable to work, or if you are unwilling to work, you cannot be, by definition, you cannot be unemployed person, right? But like this inability to work is difficult to be measured. I mean, uh, what kind of disadvantages, uh, what kind of disabilities, sorry, you should have uh, to be called unable to work, then we've got also the same situation, the same problem with people who do not want to work. I mean, they could declare they do want, right? They could, because being an unemployed person can give you some privileges. I mean, if you declare that you want to work, if you become an unemployed person, you are entitled to unemployment benefits. You can be entitled to free of charge healthcare, right? If you really don't want to work, but you do declare that you want to, you can gain the status of unemployed person and all the benefits of the status, right? So it is difficult to say whether people, whether some people that are unemployed, do they really want to work, right? In many cases, this definition of an employed person, when it comes to statistical term, can be set by politicians, right? So there are some cases, some situations, some examples, uh, when we can say, um, you can manipulate with this definition, and then uh, you can change the number of people that are unemployed, not actually unemployed, but statistically unemployed, right? So uh, I, I can remember at least two such situations from our Polish context that would uh, serve as good examples, right? The first one, when the government decided to link the status of being unemployed 
to this benefit of having free of charge healthcare. Right? And that was the time of high unemployment in Poland. So uh, many people were unemployed. They already lost their mm, possibility to get unemployment benefits, but they remained unemployed. And when this privilege, this, this benefit of having free of charge healthcare was linked to being officially unemployed, many people who are not registered as unemployed, they decided to become one, right? To become an unemployed person to get doctor's advice free of charge. So many people that were actually unemployed decided to register as such and in the uh, in the statistics, we could see them clearly, the increase in the unemployment, right? More people unemployed than previously. Actually, they were simply registered. They were actually unemployed, but not registered. They become registered and therefore, in a st statistical sense, we had more people unemployed. Or this definition can be also changed by saying, for instance, the unemployed person is a person who lost their job and wants to uh, work and they are willing to work, they are able to work. If you decide to change the definition in this way, then for all the people that graduate from the university, they are looking for a job and they cannot find it, well, they are not unemployed. They are not unemployed because if definition says this is a person that uh, lost a job, well, if you are a graduate, then you didn't lose any job. You just finished your education, right? And that could lead to lowering the unemployment rate, the numbers of, of unemployed people, right? So because of the fact that this definition can be manipulated, Unemployment may be underestimated or overestimated, depending on, on some changes in, in the definition, right? Now we are going to have a brief look at uh, labor market parameters in Poland. You may ask yourself a question to ex what extent you know something about a labor market situation in your country and the changes uh, that took place over uh, last one to three decades, right? For Poland, that's not more than three decades, in fact, because this is when we faced unemployment as such, right? So if you uh, have a look at the next slide, I'm going to show you here this year 2010 and 2018. Uh, so this is for the end of the year here and there. Uh, look at long-term unemployed people, right? This is in thousands, right? In thousands of unemployed persons. Nearly 1 million in 2010, half a million in 2018. So this is a very nice decrease, right? Those who um, possessed benefit rights, well, the number also just divided by two, right? We have a, we have a half of the previous number, right? And you can also see uh, the unemployment rate, registered unemployment rate. So this is this statistical thing, have a look. And we've got 12,000, 12%, uh, 12%, sorry, here, and less than 6% here. Again, you can see a considerable decrease, right? That's connected very much to some changes in the labor market and also economic development. We are going to discuss it later. And you can also see job offers, right? So you can see high, relatively high unemployment in 2010, here yeah, this year, right? 12.4 uh, and like 20,000 and something job offers, right? Look at unemployment rate in 2018 which is half of this one here, right? We had more than 12, we've got less than six, and we've got job, job offers 
over 60,000. So that's like three times more nearly, all right? You can see a lot of changes taking place here, right? You can also uh, have a look at um, what is the education of people that are unemployed. And if you look at the composition, then you could say in 2010, you could clearly see that if you were quite poorly educated, then you are pretty likely to become an unemployed person. In other words, nearly uh, 60 percent, nearly 60 percent, well over 50, well, well over half of people uh, had basic vocational or lower secondary primary and incomplete um, primary education, right? So those people who are quite uh, low educated, well, they can have problem finding a job. Like when you look at higher education, that was 10%. So every 10th person, you could say, that was unemployed uh, had higher education. This is slightly changed, you know, when you look at 2018, right? For the total, not splitting between men and women, have a look, that's 14. That's more, right? You can see it. Yeah, uh, this is mostly due to the fact that we educated quite a lot of people here, right? Many people going to universities and you know, what is inevitable, some of them ended up as unemployed people. So we simply have more people in the society and this um, higher education diploma is not any 100% um, guarantee uh, or insurance against unemployment. But you can see again that if you, if your education is pretty low, look at those two numbers here, then still you've got high chances to become unemployed. Half of people that are unemployed, sorry for that, half of people that are unemployed have low, actually low uh, educational level. Right. And the last thing, I believe, uh, look at the original differences, right? Uh, the region of Poznan, uh, very low unemployment, pretty nice uh, in uh, the region of Shlonsk and, and the region of Krakow. Uh, Mazowiecki, well, the region where Warsaw is located, the capital uh, city of, of Poland, uh, and our Pomeranian region as well, they are relatively uh, nice when you look at, at unemployment, right? You can see high unemployment here and here. If you go back to our lecture on gross domestic product, if you look at uh, the differences in real GDP in regions, you would say, well, these are also those poorer regions of Poland, right? Those here, this one here, yeah, they are quite, quite lower on the scale, you could say, all right? So there is some link probably between unemployment rate and economic development, not only for the whole country, but also in this regional dimension. All right, so that's, that's all for today or tonight. Thank you for your attention. Uh, I need to change the slide. I don't want to see you next week. I want to see you during our uh, next lecture that I'm going to record, hopefully slightly better than this one. Uh, be tolerant, be patient with me. I'm just an absolute beginner. Okay.